This program is powered by the Virtual Show, making your offline events virtual. Ladies and gentlemen, the host of Web at Virtual, Dr. Plamen Rusev. Thank you so much for joining wonderful Webit community from all around the world. Another Webit virtual meeting with community members, with our friends, and with people who care supporting the entrepreneurial innovation ecosystem from all around the world on our journey of uh, creating the desirable future together. Today we shall have, as I say, my favorite uh, part of Webit Virtual, the Demo Investor Day of Founders Games. We have made a fine selection of best of the best startups in post-seed stage who are going to be presenting, which means up to a million to two million investment max, who are going to be presenting here on our virtual stage in front of uh, four investors from all around the world. And uh, they will hear their pitches, they will ask them questions. And at the end of the day, we shall be having a winner. Actually, two winners. One winner selected by the jury and one will win the hearts of the audience. As you can see below that window of video, uh, there are thumbs um, up and thumbs down. You can share your uh, impression from the startups that you see by clicking one of those two. Obviously the one up is the positive one, the down is not that positive, and it will give some pressure both to the startup and to the jury to push or to extend the questions. So uh, we have you, we have the jury, we have the startups. Let's start. Let me introduce you the jury members. Gene Hammond is a general partner at Learn Launch. Learn Launch Institute, Accelerator and Campus together support the growth of Greater Boston's EdTech cluster. Gene is an active angel investor focusing on early stage high tech startups. She was honored with the highest award for angels in the US. Gene, welcome to the studio. Thanks How very much. You? I'm, I'm uh, excited to be here. This is my first uh, time at Webit, so I'm going to learn a lot. We are absolutely excited to have you with us. And um, it would have been great if it's in person, but uh, we never miss a chance to interact and to stay connected using now the virtual reality, which becomes more and more real, isn't it, these days? I live on Zoom. <laughs> <laughs> I know the feeling. I know the feeling very well. You know, I have a trick lately. I have like, most probably like you, 10 to 15 calls per day. And I very, very, very kindly request sometimes just to switch off my camera. Please don't do it in the next one hour. <laughs> Thank you so much for being with us. Let me introduce you our second uh, jury member. Morgan Kessels is a growth investor at GAC Capital Partners. He started his career in telecom and tech investment banking, working on various M&A transactions. Morgan then co-founded the company Wink, which helps retailers implement omnichannel logistics operations. Morgan, welcome. Welcome everyone, happy to be here and uh, thank you for having me. Uh, very excited. Uh, it's also my first web bit um, and looking to to know more about the, the startup you, you guys have selected. Absolutely. Looking forward to show you the startups. We already have a lineup of uh, success stories for the past many edition already. We started three months ago with the virtual once we understood that uh, the in-person will be a tough job to predict. Um, we already have a bunch of uh, discussions with our, the final stage from investors participating and startups pitching. Obviously, what we do is the magic of matching investors with the right industry interest and ticket size with the startups and the right um, level of development and stage 
and of course leading industry innovation. You will hear those from the uh, this particular vertical, the future of work and education. I'm a little bit concerned, but this is always we do like this. Your ticket sizes are between 10 to 15 million, if uh, if I am all right. So these startups are a bit earlier stage for you, but it will be a great point of view to, to have you on this panel and uh, to hear your thoughts on how they will reach the size you will get involved. That's the idea. Thank you. Thank you so much. Let me introduce you our next investor jury member. Ali Madhavi is a managing partner at Blockchain Founders Fund. He is passionate about emerging technologies to help change the world. This includes blockchain, cryptocurrency, artificial intelligence, machine learning, IoT, education and fintech. Ali previously held roles with PayPal, Microsoft, Bloomberg and the Royal Canadian Air Force. Ali, welcome back. Thank you for having me back. I'm uh, I'm definitely excited to be here. And uh, and and while a lot of uh, individuals might know my investment background, I thought an interesting thing to to share was actually my passion for the future of work and, and education. And and previously, I've written several books uh, focused on the education sector and been on uh, a number of uh, academic related boards uh, for leading institutions. So happy to be here and excited to see the startups. Ali, have have you ever mentioned that we only invite amazing people here? Well, I'm just trying to follow in your footsteps. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much for coming back. And so I look forward to a fantastic panel with some really great startups. Let me introduce our last jury member and we move on to the show. Here he is. Betty Preden is a venture capitalist at South Central Ventures. He brings more than nine years of experience in VC investing, corporate strategy, business development and global expansion. He also plays an active role in the startup community in Serbia through mentoring and coaching. Welcome. How are you, Paja? Thank you very much. I'm uh, very happy to be part of this jury and very excited to join the Webit community. Welcome to the Webit community. It's a wonderful one. Since the past three weeks, we have increased our database by um, almost 10%, which is phenomenal number of above 100,000 these days already. And if you think we've been in existence for the past 13 years, these three months have been phenomenal. And uh, let's see how this will grow. That's great to see. Thank you for joining. Now we have the four of you in uh, in the studio and um, we can move on to presenting the startups the startups who we have selected as part of the world's largest startup challenge the founders games 4500 startups applying and um, one million dollar award some we have invited others have applied but at the end of the day, we make sure that we select the best of the best and we present them to the world. Without further ado, let's start with the pitching. Welcome to Andy and uh, Diego Santiago. Hola, Santiago. Diego, ¿qué tal? Hola. Hi. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, I'm about to start. Thank you for receiving me. Uh, it's an honor to be selected right here. So I'm... I'm going to start. Thank you, Yuri, for hearing me out. You have three minutes. It starts now. Okay. Well, Andy, a new culture of work for rapid organizational growth. During this tragic time of COVID-19, companies realized that they were not ready to face a cultural change in work and the new ways of work. Remote work, temporary workers, cloud-based working tools, they are reality now. We're having a virtual summit right here. So we built Andy, a collaborative workspace for remote work. And we make it really easy. We, we did it in levels. So you have three different levels, workspace level, single workspace level, single project level that we summarize at every single level. So at workspace level, you 
have a summary of how many projects do you have in a workspace, how many people is working, the pending work on it. Once you get into a workspace, you have a single workspace level with different views, portfolio views, roadmap, uh, availability of resources at the time, budgeting, absolutely everything. But the true magic happens once you are in a single project level. Every tool to manage work, to from tasks to milestones, chats, file sharing, collaborators, we can identify if the collaborator is an in-house or external or temporary resource. And you have absolutely everything in the in tasks from Kanban view to roadmaps, absolutely everything. And the best of, of all is we can create as many features as we want in the single project or integrate with any other tool. And the best and unique at every level is that we did it organized. So you have my organizer and global chats in every part of the, of, the, of the levels. And once you are in my organizer, you can work directly into the tasks that you need, that the works that you need to do today. So we identify the workspace and the project that you're working on. And conversation is like the perfect WhatsApp for business. We identify the conversations of, of the workspace and a project. You can create tasks, file, and share everything at every, at, 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 at every single moment. So the collaborative app market knows it. Last year, it was 46 billion euros. And during this time, it expects to grow 45% for this year, uh, more than that 63 billion euros in, in this industry. So an average user is using four or more tools and, and they pay 50 euros monthly uh, or more than 60 or, or more than 600 yearly. So we create a business, a SaaS business model uh, for 699 monthly or 69.99 yearly, all in one single place. Uh, we want to transform the culture, the cultural transformation to being normal, to being dynamic, a new culture of work for rapid organizational growth. My name is Diego Santiago, I'm co-founder and CEO, along with my co-founder Pablo Fertini and our technological partner, Jorge Martinez. We Thank have you. been working on this. Is, oh, okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Oh, you're, you're doing well. I just gave you a couple of <laughs> seconds you. more. We saw the last uh, screen. I wanted to, to keep it there and uh, the team in the studio will keep it there most probably once you answer the questions because okay. it's important part of our vetting platform. So we are vetting your scalability of the business the uniqueness of idea, the team capacity, the marketing approach, and the business development approach. So these are the five factors that will make you a winner or at least will vet your participation here. Now I would like to request the jury members to start with the questions. Who will be first? Oh, okay, go ahead, Morgan. Yeah, happy to, to, to take the lead um, on the first question. Um, I'm not sure I get uh, how it's specific to remote work and why uh, these uh, tools couldn't be applied to basically any 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 worker, even if not remote. Uh, well, we realized um, more than two years ago that there was that there were three major trends: co-working spaces, uh, freelancers sourcing talented solutions, at freelance Upwork, all of them, and we realized that work was going to go remote. Uh, so three months ago, everyone was saying like, yeah, it's gonna probably go remote, but not right now. Uh, well, uh, we're here right now. And we know that everyone is working from home. So it applies to everyone that works in services or that needs to get work done from, from home. You need to, to collaborative work with everyone at, at the same time. and have all the information in one single place to make it easy for everyone to, to work. Jane, please. Yes, so I was gonna ask a question about the marketing approach. Um, I think there's probably some companies that will be interested in the lower cost and happy to replace the tools. But I, I usually find that when you're replacing lots of different tools, you, um, you have lots of different stakeholders who like one or more of them. And, and I wondered about whether or not you had considered other approaches to the market, such as uh, trying to be in closed environments um, that were designed for specific purposes, like um, training in new employees and or um, uh, 
education environments, et cetera, because it seems like your tools might work really well for getting people up into this co-working environment. Um, and then uh, you could attack the big guys after that rather than having to start it from the beginning. So a little bit of thought on your market approach strategy. Thank you, Gene. Well, um, we've been working with several uh, corporations of different size from 10,000 employees to 50,000 employees. And all of them are in different areas from uh, manufacturing to financial services. And we identified that the most common thing, it was how to manage multidisciplinary teams and have all the information in one place. So uh, our approach was that, just giving the, the basic simple solution to everyone at this stage. So everyone can start having all the all their information in one place. And along the feedback from clients, if they want uh, a specific solution like for education or, uh, or virtual meetings, you can start getting uh, new features inside, uh, inside every single project. So we, that's why we did it in level. So we can create uh, as many features as, as we want or even integrate with those that big guys are, are having right now as Microsoft, Google, and many others on, on the market. So you have all the information pulling back from their platforms into one single environment. That's our, our, our approach into the big companies. Um, but we realized that it's a kind of a slow uh, in that area. So we launched two months ago, uh, the, 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 full, the full product in iOS, Android, and, and on web. And what we are doing now is we're focusing on online communities and software markets, uh, software markets. And we have uh, really good feedback from them. They, they're trying like, okay, it's better, cheaper and everything in one place. We, we're having a really good response. I don't know if that answers your, your question. More questions? Yeah, so 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 re really think this is quite interesting. One of the the things that maybe I'm not seeing too clearly is how is this different from players like Slack? So how are you substantially better in some way? And what are the biggest challenges that you're facing uh, around scaling this given the timing of this is is so perfect in the current environment? Um, well, uh, Slack, we know that he's the, the leader in the in the work stream industry. Uh, that's how big guys are calling it now. Uh, Slack is based on communication and their main focus on, on business is integrate all of other platforms. So you have everything, but you're still paying for several tools and not every single information organized. So it, at the end of, of the day, it starts to be unproductive and inefficient. You have four or five tabs or even six, seven different apps in your phone and it starts to be un unproductive. So our approach is, is like that, to have everything in one single place and to do it everything in one single place, from task and everything in just one single environment. I don't know if that answered your question. Uh, biggest challenge? Our biggest challenge? Um, well, we start working with big corporations and they wanted like really detailed. Uh, we faced that a lot of big corporations didn't have a digital transformation area and they were like really going really moving really slow in, in the market. And we, we just, we just worked with them. So it was really hard to, to start getting into the digital traction. So that's why we select the, the SMEs market to, to approach it faster and grow organically uh, as long as we can get a, another round and, and hire more team uh, to have a, a, a specific uh, sales area to, to start giving a consultancy on how to transform their entire culture of work. We realized in, in corporations that it's so many people and so many things at different levels that you, they need to understand first the process of how, uh, how they need to transform the information and the decision-making inside their corporation the, in a more agile way. If, if, I don't know if that answered your question. Thank you. I think that, well, that was her. I would like to, to give a feedback to your presentation um, and uh, Diego please try to keep your answers shorter because okay. uh, you. you have like five minutes I have extended by two more uh, but please try to be more direct in your in your answers because it's a pitch it's not a it's not an overall discussion um, otherwise doing great thank you so much
Unfortunately, okay. our uh, fourth participant cannot ask you a question, which might lower your vetting at the end of the day if he needed that information and he needed it for sure. But anyway, we, we have time limits and um, regardless, we, I have extended your time. You're still over time by two minutes. So um, thank you for joining. Uh, please stay with us until the end of the show. And uh, we will continue with uh, our next participant. The uh, next participant is, is uh, called Placence. And it's a post-seat company uh, with um, 1.5 million from Israel. And so we'll be having the pleasure of welcoming here Mr. Dan Gilion Gildoni, who will join us in a second. In the meantime, I would like to request the attendees of the jury, the jury members, to fill in the data of their vets so we don't de get delay in the vetting of the startups. And now, welcome, Dan. How are you? Thank you so much. I'm very well. Thank you. For Welcome aboard. I'm starting my timer. And I don't see you the luck. presentation, though. Uh, uh, you should see the presentation. To... You just, uh, just see... follow the training uh, procedure. There we go. Perfect. Ready to go. So hi, everyone. My name is Dan, and I'm co-founder and CEO of Playsense. I have been a serial entrepreneur for the past years, dealing mainly in the online worlds. Now, the interesting thing about the online worlds is in the online worlds, we understand everything the visitors and the users are doing, and based on that, we're making decisions. With Placens, we're bringing for the first time ever these methodologies to the physical world, allowing occupiers for the first time to understand how people interact, what are their journeys. Up to now, these type of locations or places that have been um, basing their information mainly on gut feelings by sending out laborious surveys or commute surveys, or in some cases having a guy like this standing in a street corner and actually counting the people. And based on that, they've been making decisions of billions of euros. With PlaySense, there's no need for surveys, no need for hardware, all based on our machine learning capabilities with data that we bring from these sensors, these sensors that you all have in your pockets. We're currently connected with over 11 million devices, providing us daily access to information. Data that we bring by partnering up with third-party apps, apps that you already have installed on your phone, and with that, we're able to scale so fast. We can do that because we solved the privacy issue. We created an algorithm that totally knows how to um, anonymize the information and make it impossible to understand who the individuals are. We started in August 2018 with Nielsen and Energy as investors, and we already sold in the first year licenses for occupiers and consultancies for over 400,000 euros, providing them information of where people actually come from. What is the density of the people of the high streets? From what points of interest they arrive to a certain location, from what home locations, office locations, and of course the ability to compare any of these locations side by side, knowing things like retention, interests, genders, ages, and having the ability to bring an accurate footfall count with historical information of a year down to the granularity of every two hours. With that, we bring occupiers insights about their most frequented asked questions, showing them their customer journeys, in this case, their talents, understanding if the location should be repurposed and changed. We know what their marketing efforts are and if they have an oversaturation. We started in Germany because Germany is known to be the most strict as far as data privacy is concerned. And the idea was if we can make it in Germany, we can expand elsewhere. None of this could, of course, happen without a fantastic team, starting with Avi, my co-founder, coming from a background of app monetization, and Eyal, a serial entrepreneur himself, leading our data, together with a strong team of data experts and data science experts, bringing, bringing a product to market in a very short amount of time. Happy to answer any questions you may have. Excuse me. Thank you for your time. Great job. Todaba. So we have uh, our jury ready for questions, and I would like to start with, with uh, Peja. 
because you couldn't ask your question previously. Uh, we've seen a, a great presentation, Peggy. If you if you're ready to ask question, it's fine. You can uh, you can pass. Sure, sure. Dan, thank thank you for the presentation. A really interesting one. Uh, my question is, you know, how did COVID impacted uh, your business? Do you have like a post COVID strategy? Because you've been mentioning a lot about you know the retail and the offline space, and also I would like to understand. You know, uh, it talks a lot about data, but I would like to understand what are the insights that are coming out and, you know, whether you're partnering with someone on this or you have a proprietary algorithm. So we'll start from COVID. COVID for us was um, a huge accelerator. Speaking of marketing, now everyone accessible, being able to uh, bring on board people that up to now would not go on a video chat, making it very easy. Now with COVID, everyone was interested to see indexes. Are people coming back to workspaces? Are people coming back to retail? Are people coming back and how they're interacting? And that's the type of insights we were able to create instantly. These insights are all based on our models, proprietary algorithms. Uh, four of them have uh, provisional patenting with the ability to actually create insights with the most, um, with the frequented answers to the most painful questions our customers have. So this is all proprietary information. And in the end of the day, it's anywhere from expansion, changes, location picking, marketing impact, so on and so forth. Thank you. More questions? Yeah, I, I, I have one if I may. Um, thank you, Dan, for the presentation. Um, so I understand your, your product help your clients to better understand the customer journey, um, but do you, as well allow them to enhance and to improve this customer journey because i guess these are two different expertise so how do you approach that i'm not trying to answer the question what do you mean by making a better customer journey i mean um whenever you provide a, a, an information for instance on on the customer journey the number of visitors um in in a in a in a retail store for instance do you as well um, help your clients to improve the metrics you provide them? Definitely. So I can give you one example. Speaking about yeah. retail, in the past week, uh, we suggested a large retail chain to actually close down two stores because they're redundant. 50% of the people coming to one store are actually going to another store, so there's no need for it. We understand the impact of their spend on outdoor advertising. Up to now, they've been spending millions of euros without understanding the impact, and we can actually show um, an audit um, the reach of these people and if they're actually arriving to their locations, whether if it's work or commerce. So okay. I'll ask a question that goes into sort Eugene. of the, the roadmap for the future, um, because it seems like the future is about blending online and offline knowledge. The idea that you could place the order, just jump in your car, run over, pick it up and come back. You don't have to go in the store or whatever. And so as we look at that as a future, is there, do you have any insights is into how you might be starting to address issues like that? So one important thing is that we do everything to make sure that there's no ability to correlate between an individual and their data. Therefore, we do not correlate between online and offline behavior. So online is going through, offline is going, or retail is going through an evolution. But the establishments or the places themselves, especially workplaces, won't disappear. And we're definitely helping with repurposing and making sure that we're giving the right insights about what repurposing efforts these locations need to make to make the best out of their uh, commercial real estate locations. Yeah, as a quick question, I think one of the key parts here is actually these relationships with other apps, to, to the 11 million apps that you said in terms of getting data. So- um, 11 one million of the users. 11 users, sorry. How do you, um, you know, approach those relationships? What do they look like? And how do you incentivize them uh, to be able to continue to grow that? So monetizing on, on app data is nothing new. It's been around forever. But what has dramatically changed definitely in Europe is GDPR, which made privacy almost impossible for them to monetize. But for us, a huge opportunity because we're now approaching app developers. And by the way, Avi, my co-founder, has been doing that on the advertising world with uh, hundreds of millions of dollars in the past years. So we're approaching app developers and saying, hey, now with our solution, 
data privacy is not jeopardized. Your business won't be jeopardized. We can pay you for the data, but there's no ability to understand who the users are. This is all statistical information, um, and it's a win-win situation. The apps can make a living. Decision makers can make a decision. Privacy is not jeopardized in any way, and everyone's happy. Thank you so much. Uh, we are almost on time. Thank you again for your wonderful presentation. Let Thank me you update you on the votes of the audience while I'm requesting the jury to cast their votes on uh, the five factors that we measure. I'm receiving now the, the data. We have uh, the audience award voting of minus five. We have uh, 95 ups and 100 downs for Andy. And uh, I have plus 21 for uh, places, it is quite a high number, places, congratulations. Well done. We have the whole Tel Aviv voting for you, plus the rest of the world. I see over 230 votes. That's quite, quite phenomenal for you. Congratulations. We move ahead with number three, with the third, uh, not number three, not number three, with the third uh, con uh, participant in, uh, in this uh, online uh, pitch session. And this is not a usual pitch session. As you can see, these are one of the best startups in that stage. Uh, we have Take Task and uh, Sebastian. Hello, Sebastian. Uh, hello. Hello. Um, can you can you hear me? Dzień dobry. Dzień dobry. <laughs> okay. So, so can I start? Welcome to our studio. And uh, we start. Which city in Poland are you? I'm from Warsaw. All right. Great. So um, you have three minutes. Let's start now. Great. Okay. So uh, my name is Sebastian. I'm the founder and CEO of Take Task. Um, usually, large organizations have uh, well-defined processes, uh, but they are executed by employees with different experience, skills, and attitude. The problem is false reporting, limited feedback, and suboptimal execution of, and communication. Managers uh, need a transparent overview of all delegated tasks, objective verification, and they also want it to be fast and easy. Employees, on the other hand, want to have a clear priorities list of assignments, easy access to guidance, as well as um, fast and easy feedback. Our system enables uh, fast setup distribution and confirmation of and verification of tasks on a large scale in different industries. We simplify management of all paperwork and ensure processes are done up to highest standards. Our MTP is to increase the value of human work with digitization. In the end of 2018, we launched the full version of our system, closed the seed round, started sales, employed new people, and closed the bridge round. We grew at an average 12% month-to-month rate. We got 12 paying enterprise clients, uh, some of them out of Poland, six implementations, over 30 tests. Our MRR is 30K from enterprise clients, and we almost double it well in, in the next quarter. Uh, in March, uh, when the shutdown started, we found a new use case for our system, providing flexibility and scalability. Uh, in 48 hours, we deployed the quarantine monitoring app for the Polish government with a total contract value of half million over 450k user accounts. Based on this experience, we want to add crisis management to a list of our use cases and sell it to public sector via partners. Online productivity and collaboration tool market is growing at a 12% year-to-year rate. The, the, sorry, the field force automation market is growing even faster. And we already see that COVID is increasing the pace of the, the digitization. All task management systems look the same at the first glance, I know. Our defensibility comes from deeply embedded features that give us flexibility combined with being fully scalable and enterprise ready. It's not like Andy. Uh, and we proved it with quarantine application. We sell in SaaS model. The monthly fee is based on the amount of users. And we got two distribution channels. One is our in-house growth hackings and sales team. And the other one is by our partners like Microsoft, consulting companies, telcos, IT integrators, etc. 
Our company grew from five to 25 people in 2019. We have a great team, but we want to grow even faster. That's why we are now in the middle of our next investment round to support scaling up in Europe. We already have a committed investor for half of the round. And we've talked with several investors already and we want to close the round in the next two months. Thank you very much. Thank you, Sebastian. Uh, you did it quite on time, actually before time. We didn't even yeah. hear the favorite bump of my of my team blowing on the in the face of everyone who goes beyond the time. In, in um, IT, now it's I would not like very to usual when you go before schedule, <laughs> but we we we, hope, we want to do it. We we managed to do a system in two days for the Polish government just in time as it was. Uh, Job well and... done. Job well done. You know how to pitch. Now I would like Thank to you. ask the the jury members to to come in and to start asking their questions. Well, I'll go ahead and ask. Uh, uh, you know, it does seem that all task management systems feel very similar, and so when you uh, think about the way you uh, aggregate the information or other aspects of your differentiation, um, what are the what are the key attributes of that? And then you also point out industry specific uh orientations does that mean you need to customize the product for specific industries or is it a same product for everyone it's the same product for everyone that's why we want to uh, develop sales via partners because they can go deeply into companies they can uh, use our interface to build processes because uh, comparing to andy it's it's an enterprise ready software and all of our clients are enterprises they have really their own processes and they wanted the, the system to adjust their internal processes. And, and that's why it has to be flexible, but the end user doesn't need any training and the administrator is not like some. It takes like one or two hours to be a professional user in, as an administrator. You know? so, um, so it's, it's uh, you know, when you look at the, you know, the defensibility of our system, it's really hard to reverse engineer it uh, because we got a lot of features that are hidden from the from the user, but it makes the system very easy to use. And when we go into the to so many different areas in in the, in the company, it's it's really hard to then replace us with our software. We are not a narrow focused um, software concentrating only one single process in the company, but we want to be a single tool for the employee where he gets the whole list of his tasks that are prioritized, that, are, that he has, uh, you know, uh, feedback over there, the guidelines and so on and so on. Okay, thanks. Thank you. Thank you. More questions? So yeah. I, I, and, oh, go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah, thank you. Um, my question is actually quite close from from the one of Jan, because it seems like if, if your product is the same for every industry, every client's goes, you're seeing that your multi industry, it comes with a lot of costs for, for your customers in terms of customization and to adapt to, to their own uh, processes. Uh, don't you think like it's, a, it's, it's um, kind of a barrier to, to, to sales uh, to have uh, that level of customization and associated costs? Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is exactly our secret sauce you now because we, we combine these two things. So uh, you have uh, this drag and do drop uh, uh, process uh, uh, building tool where you can design a process and then you can design with with clicking on who when uh, when uh, where will receive the task and will be supposed to uh, execute the task how, what kind of guidelines will he get and what will happen next so if there will be another task uh, triggered from you know completing the task or some specific element of the task who will give the feedback if the task is okay or not okay so everything you design on your own and this is something we help our clients at the beginning but after you know uh, one or two processes for example building hats up for medium-sized company with 30 different recurring tasks and different patterns takes us about four to five hours so it, it's really not something that uh, that that, uh, that is a problem but still we think that this is not a scalable part of the business so we want to work with consulting companies and IT integrators that they will build their business models 
based on our software. So they will build all this consulting integration uh, services and they will sell our licenses as, as a package yeah? and they will go deeper into the company. So this is, this is the, uh, so they have to have this flexibility in order to uh, adjust to the processes that are in, in the corporate world in a certain uh, company. Understood, thanks. Thank you, more so questions? Oh, yeah, yeah, I saw so, you want to ask a question. <laughs> so I, I, I think it's quite interesting. And what I'm really curious about is, you know, what are the results from one of your customers? Like how much have they saved or what sorts of productivity benefits have they been able to achieve? And I think that'll mm -hmm. help provide a lot of context for, you know, what, what are they really using it for? Yeah, so, so this is a good question. Um, but unfortunately, uh, uh, it's, it's even better if we had only one process. Because if we had only one process, well defined, then I could really give you more many statistics, but our clients use TikTok to many different processes. And one of the extreme examples was one of the clients told us that uh, there was an uh, unfortunate uh, Azure cloud uh, a problem and they couldn't work with our system for just one day. And, and they told us the total loss they had was about 1 million euros. So you can imagine that this, is, this can become a really uh, a crucial system for the, for the company and they can serve millions but the thing is that you have to go into the organization and look at what kind of processes are done now in a uh, you know in a, in a manual way and what you want to uh, digitize and uh, and the digitization is not only putting it into a smartphone but it's uh, you know linking different people in the organization to make the whole process the whole communication more structured and and and, and more efficient so, um, so that's why each company has to have their own, um, uh, you know, uh, way of counting the, 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 the profits they have for the application. Fortunately, we have a really, really very low churn, what proves that we bring a lot of value to companies. And with each single process, the value for them is bigger because they pay not more for the, for the users because they have the users already. They can add more and more processes to the system. We are again a lot over time, and um, I would request now the jury members to share with us what are their reflections on these three presentations. And my request is to be very honest, very direct, because this will help the entrepreneurs pitching today and those that are in general listening to this, we had over 3,400 people at a certain moment um, watching, at least this was the number I saw, maybe it's now different. Um, I would like now to ask everyone to fill the votes for all the, uh, the, 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 the startups. In the meantime, I know Jane has to fill all of them, so I will not start with her. Let me start with Ali. Ali, I would like to hear your reflection, if you may while Jane and the others are filling up their, their data. Um, Ali, tell me, what, what do you think about those um, great founders here? Yeah, so, so I, I do think that you know, the, the startups were quite, quite interesting. I mean, from Andy's perspective, I think one of the big challenges is you know, trying to replace so many tools within an organization, right? So I think it was mentioned that there's going to be a lot of different uh, you know, people that are impacted. And, and the more tools that you're replacing at once, the bigger the training costs, the bigger the risk for an enterprise. And so that's going to limit their likelihood to actually adopt a tool that's, that's so widely across the organization. So finding one thing that you can do really well and then you know, expand from there once you're inside. Um, with PlaySense, uh, I do think they were very strong. Uh, I do think that they, they're clearly able to monetize and had some very good solutions around GDPR to ensure they're compliant. So I think uh, they seem to be quite strong and, and have uh, you know, quite, quite, a, quite a good growth trajectory, uh, it seems. Um, with TakeTask, um, I just couldn't really figure out you know, how they are going to differentiate and expand versus a lot of the other sort of task tools um it does seem like there's some traction there's a 30k mrr so clearly some companies are uh valuing it but um you know something kind of much more specific i was looking for in terms of understanding really you know what is the value from from a lot of these sort of companies 
um, when they when they when they basically input it, what are the sort of the decisions that they're making in terms of ROI to ensure that this actually tool makes sense for them as, in an organization um, and, and to reduce sort of pain points for them. Thank you so much, Adi. Uh, which one is your favorite? I hear I heard, but please say it. Correct. It's number two. Correct. All right, I got it. I just want to update take task is at minus seven. So, um, all right. So let's move on to, to next. Uh, Peja, we, we didn't have time enough to hear all your questions, but uh, you were listening very carefully. So uh, what is your, what's your reflection on, on these three founders? I, I think that you're muted. Sorry. Okay. Let's see if this works. Okay. Can you hear me now? Yeah, perfect. Perfect. No, I, I think that all three teams have been uh, developing quite complex solutions. Um, I think that on, on Andy's side, I, I, I see some, uh, some risks going forward with kind of like, you know, with a bundled solution, um, having to, to compete with each uh, on, on each dimension, which would be very difficult and, you know, except pricing, it's very difficult to see the unfair advantage. Um, on, the, on the place and side, I, I think that that one was probably the most sophisticated to me and the one that had really unique value proposition um, that made a difference. So um, that's the one I kind of prioritized. And then uh, take task. Um, my question is how they can um, expedite the, the uh, integrations with the new customers and be able to, to, to scale it in, in a fast way. Thank you so much. Would you, would you have any advice on the way they were presenting? Not many people pre pitch in front of 3,000 plus uh, audience. So do you have um, any advice on that? I think they actually all three of them, they, they did a really good job and I want to applaud them on that. Uh, there might be some uh, minor uh, improvements, but in overall, I think they can be quite quite satisfied. Thank you so much. While we're giving more time to Jean, uh, no, I've got like... mine. I've got mine all entered. Oh, okay, perfect. All right, Jean, then please uh, tell me your your reflection, please. So, um, so I felt that take uh, task was very interesting. Um, when they described their unique uh, drag and drop process setup, I thought, hmm, those are the kind of uh, clever, easy to use factors that sometimes make a product take off, right? So, you know, who knew we all needed Slack a couple of years ago? And, um, and so, uh, uh, despite the fact that there's a gazillion uh, task managers out there, I was pretty intrigued by the way they were talking about it. I did think that they failed to provide a good, clear marketing message of why they were different and how they were different and that maybe an example would help with that. Um, I agree with everybody that PlaySense seems to have some really uh, serious science and that their ability to, uh, to solve the um, unique identifier uh, problem uh, is, is intriguing and m might even have uh, legs outside of the, the, the live market that they're addressing today. So lots of cool science and likelihood of success uh, for them. And um, like others, I felt that ND was going to face uh, some market entry problems. I like the fact that they pivoted to small business because small business is um, uh, price sensitive and uh and and has a um and, and therefore they could use that to their advantage um so i'm just going to be a little bit out of the group and say that i think that uh um with some tweaks that that i can put uh take task in my top spot thank you so much jean thank you for for this and uh I would like to ask Morgan to join me in the studio and to, to share um, his impressions. Yeah. Um, so I broadly share what I've been said before by um, other other investors um, you know, regarding Andy. Um, 
I think the issues they are tackling are actually too broad and totally agree that it would be uh, probably too complex on each of the, the issue, each of the feature they want to implement to be better at uh, the solutions that are already out there. And, and I'm wondering if they wouldn't better partnering with these solutions rather than rebuilding. You can uh, imagine integrating Slack, for instance, within the, the, the anti-fraser platform. Um, so yeah, uh, I, I, I think this, this, this project is, is maybe too broad in terms of uh, ambition. Um, Take Task um, is definitely led by, by a great team. Um, and that's something I, I, I pretty enjoyed. Um, unfortunately, I feel that uh, it's really hard to be generalist in this industry because there's plenty of solutions out there which are vertical solutions. I'm thinking of Ubik for retail. I'm thinking of Beekeeper for the tourism industry, which are all doing a great job. And I don't see how being a generalist, you could really beat the existing solutions. Um, so um, I also put PlaySense in number one. Um, definitely a great team as well. Um, they're tackling a really big challenge in the industry uh, and all of these players so far have kind of failed, um, mainly because of GDPR issues. So um, I think the project is really promising and I wish them um, just as the two other good, good luck. Thank you so much, Morgan. And thanks to all the jury members for the great job you've done. Uh, highly appreciate your efforts and your time that you put. Um, I'm now wondering if and what do you think will happen? Who is the winner? Let me invite the three startups to the studio and uh, see how does it work? Who do you think is the winner, gentlemen? You've heard the, you've heard the, the, the investors, the but you never know. You know, it's they might 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 have voted differently. So, what do you think, Dan? Who is the winner? I'm very flattered by the by the warm and good words. Um, and also to be accompanied with um, outstanding uh, uh, colleagues and startups that are doing amazing um, tech and job as well. And I'm waiting to see, same as you, excited to see who's the winner. It's the right time for all of you. It's the right time because it is the education and the new collaborative methods of work, <coughs> the future of work that is expanding currently along, of course, with uh, uh, gamification and virtualization of events, uh, which grew by 1,000% for the past three months in terms of technology. Uh, that's where our partners of the virtual show are playing. Uh, who do you think is going to win, Diego? <clears throat> well, uh, thank you, everyone. Uh, I'm honored to be part of, of the, the top three startups pitching today so thank you everyone for your time uh, i think all all of the all of our, our our fellows startups are really good great ideas great execution too um i'm really excited to know who's going to be the winner uh pleasant really great job um it was a great pitch and a really unique valuable position now with the gdpr and everything how you answer that really really cool and uh take task it's amazing how you just put and drop into into companies. I, I think you have a really good marketing approach. So uh, thank you for your feedback too. Uh, I think the, the challenge is clear for us. So thank you for your feedback and we're gonna try to solve this problem too. Sebastian, would you like to switch heads uh, with some of the founders? <laughs> Yeah, I, I wouldn't mind, honestly, but uh, with, with Dan, because he's, he's the favorite uh, for the juries. And, uh, you know, I, I don't have a problem with, with being the second or the third, because we are here actually uh, uh, already uh, at, the, at the very top. So, uh, so, honestly, I'm already happy. I don't have a problem with this. But uh, what's, what, right. I, what I expect is that, that Dan will, will, will take the first place. You know? And uh, congratulations, honestly. Wait, wait, wait. Don't be in a hurry. Don't be in a hurry. 
don't don't give up that easy <laughs> oh i don't I give you up have, you know you have pretty good chances sebastian the three of you one thing you're absolutely right is that you are at the top we are not selecting anything yeah, exactly. but really great founders with very very competent and hardworking teams making amazing things that's what webit is for so you are among the winners anyway but yes there is um, there is uh, one way to find out if the jury has been sharing with us video wise what they have put as votes and i'm checking it now and the winner is The winner for audience and the jury is Placens. Congratulations, Dan. Congratulations. Congratulations, Dan. Really good job. Job well done. Uh, you, you did it. Well, it was a little bit unfair. You're almost twice more funded by uh, Diego and 50% uh, more funded by Take Tas. But at the end of the day, um, it is it is the thing you've done that made you the winner here. I think you were you had a very compelling presentation, very well done, strong answers, short, very much on spot. This all works the magic. This is a feedback to Diego and Sebastian. You were a little bit more explanatory in your in your answers, and that kind of it gives some you know unconfidence in um, the next steps of voting still it's not only the presentation though you know that this is the least we are voting here and vetting even though it gives the impression and perception is reality but um, uh, you've really done some great stuff so congratulations you are now part of the webit family done you are getting immediately straight to the uh, found founders games finals with full access to the um, uh, having exhibition and of course being part of the one million dollar award congratulations and it's time to say bye until tomorrow dear wonderful webit community we are going to see you tomorrow and tomorrow is the last day of the future of work and education week at Webit Virtual. We are meeting here some phenomenal media representatives. You see them here and they shall be sharing with you their take on the future processes that will be shaping the future of workforce and how we shall learn and educate ourselves throughout our lives. Because that's the future of work and education, an ongoing process. That's why I'm not a big fan of the summer holidays for the students because life doesn't give you a holiday you are there 24 7 365 and hopefully 100 plus years making you sure that you are always the best version of yourself every second of your life that's the future of work and education but to get more to the detail we will hear tomorrow some great media representatives from leading media like Best BuzzFeed, uh, from CNN, from Fast Company, uh, USA Today and ours. So stay with us tomorrow, same time. And if you have missed yesterday's talk with the founder of Khan Academy, uh, Sal Khan, with the godmother of the Silicon Valley, and a fantastic contributor to the well-being of the humankind, Esther Wojcicki, who recently wrote a book on uh, how to raise successful children. And she is in a very good position to say it because one of her daughters is um, the CEO of YouTube. The other one is the founder of 23andMe. Third one is a very successful ont um, uh, anthropologist. She knows how to create successful children, definitely. We had also... Uh, two best-selling authors on the future of education and work. And if you've missed it, go to our time capsules and at previous events and check it out. Check the past already more than 20 editions of Webit Virtual. Such a fun. I see you tomorrow. Thank you all for joining. Congratulations again to...
to Dan Gildoni from Placens and to all the other participants and special thanks to the jury members. See you tomorrow. This program is powered by the virtual.show, making your offline events virtual.